With so many economic metrics surrounding Donald Trump's time in office, we have to consider the pandemic factor because, yes, you did have inflation that averaged below 2% during the course of his four years, but in part that is skewed because it did drop down to 0.1% during the spring of 2020 at the very height of the pandemic. So when he says we had no inflation effectively at one point, yes, that was true, but that was not true in aggregate over the course of his administration. Also, when he contends that we uh, were growing our way out of fact tax cuts uh, during the administration. That too was not true. And again, we do have to consider the pandemic factor uh, within that. So those are just some of the uh, data points that we can actually point to uh, during the course of his presidency. We have to just kind of try to forecast forward what the impact of some of the policies he's talking about now will be, which is where you find the vast majority of economists saying that his tax cuts would be uh, additive to the deficit and perhaps inflation uh, along with that. And of course, that his tariff policy will be inflation as well, even though he contends that it will not be. You, you know, Kaylee, it's funny. Every time the inflation conversation comes up, I'm reminded of an interview I did with Professor Jeremy Siegel of Wharton, who after the first CARES Act, which was, mm -hmm. you know, the biggest fiscal stimulus since since the World War II, and then the second mm -hmm. CARES Act and, and the Response Relief Act and other COVID relief both passed under... Um, President Trump, and I, by, on a bipartisan basis, Siegel was the first yeah. person who said, during the Trump presidency, this is going to be massively inflationary. It just has to work its way through the system. It's amazing that nobody's tagged him. A and mm -hmm. I think the choice was either much higher unemployment or inflation, but it seems sort of disingenuous to say, hey, I had nothing to do with inflation. Clearly, both Trump yeah. and Biden passed massive fiscal stimulus, and that's what dro drove most of the inflation. Yeah, and we do have the numbers that bear that out. The Committee for the Responsible, uh, Re Responsible Federal Budget is a great uh, source on this, and they have pointed out that during the Trump-Pence administration, more than $8 trillion of new spending was approved in terms of 10-year borrowing. $4.8 trillion of that excludes the CARES Act and other COVID relief. So yes, a massive portion of that was COVID relief, which was stimulative to uh, the economy, as we have seen in the aftermath. But that was still uh, $4 trillion of other spending uh, that was approved as well. And of course, with the tax cuts, uh, that was about two and a half trillion dollars uh, of that. So we do have the numbers that show this. But yes, you're absolutely right, as the inflationary effects weren't felt until President Biden took office. It has really been the Biden administration that has taken the brunt of the blame on this, not uh, Donald Trump. And of course, we know that supply chains were a factor in this as well, that the supply side, the much more difficult uh, force of inflation uh, to address had a huge role to play in that as well. But that isn't always what has been reflected in voter sentiment, although Kamala Harris has been able to gain ground on the economy uh, relative to where Joe Biden was. Voters don't blame her quite as much, it seems. Uh